And uh, so uh, again, this is the second of a whole series of workshops this week. Uh, yesterday was really kind of a very basic orientation to faculty who had uh, not been in Moodle before. Uh, today we're talking about content. I mean, several of the topics we'll be looking at today could be and have been the topic of their own workshop. So it'll be somewhat of a high level uh, of view. We're going to be looking at some basic activities tomorrow, uh, discussion forums, assignments, quizzes, uh, grading, gradebook and, and assessment uh, topics on Thursday, and some overall course administration uh, topics for the end of the week on Friday. Um, for those of you who are online now, um, and um, well, let me let me make the other comment that the workshops that we're doing this week, and let me go ahead and start sharing my screen. are uh, tied to, most of them are tied to material that we also have available in our Moodle Foundation Certificate course. So this would be a place where you can go back and I've enrolled you all as participants in this course. So, these down where I can see them. This uh, Foundation's course basically, starts with an empty Moodle shell and goes to the kinds of steps that um, most faculty would take to get their empty Moodle course shell ready to go. So uh, figuring out how you want to organize your course, that was one of the topics we talked about last time, attendance, managing course communications we talked about last time. What we'll be talking about today is really re uh, related to these um, pages and screencasts that I have in the foundations course about different ways of, of adding content to your course. Um, learning activities, gradebook, and so forth. Um, so at this point, before we get started too much, I'm going to stop sharing a little bit so I can see the chat a little bit more easily. Uh, I would find it useful if everyone would just type into the chat what your interests are about adding content to your Moodle courses. What do you what What are your goals? What kinds of content did you are you thinking to add? Um, what experience do you have adding content to your Moodle courses already? Okay, so we will talk about videos. Uh, quizzes we'll be talking about tomorrow, screencast videos. Um, so most of the um, content that we'll, you'll be putting into your Moodle course is really kind of related to asynchronous access by on the part of students. So this won't necessarily um, I'm not sure that you would necessarily pull up content in a live, say, Zoom session, although we can uh, talk about that if you want to have a consultation. Um, so, yeah, continue to, to pop those in. Um, let me go back to sharing screen. And um, I mean, what I've got on the docket for today is a lot of faculty will put various kinds of files and other resources up into their courses. So we'll certainly talk about that. Uh, a lot of faculty have interest in web video and, and some of you mentioned that in the chat as well. I'm gonna actually start off with kind of a, a straightforward throwaway kind of content um, um, in, in dealing with web links just to kick things off. Uh, and then uh, talk a little bit about uh, doing VoiceThread. Um, and we can also, if you're more interested in, in, interested in further um, information about VoiceThread, we did a VoiceThread workshop this last spring that's also up in the, in the YouTube channel. So uh, Marie, I'm gonna let you go ahead and monitor the chat from now on. I'm gonna be in screen sharing mode. Um, 
I guess what I would want you to think about as you're thinking about adding content uh, resources and so forth to your course is uh, what do you want to provide to your students in what format and in particular one thing I think faculty could benefit from thinking a bit more about is how to provide context around those resources uh, and so we'll come back to this topic time and time again We'll talk a little bit today about making sure that the content that you do put up in your courses uh, meet basic accessibility needs. I'm, I'm really not the expert on that, and we could, again, spend whole workshops on um, dealing with accessibility issues of different kinds of media. Um, if you, um, you know, if you haven't contacted or been contacted by Rebecca Oling in the library who is the digital resources accessibility point person on campus uh, you might really want to follow up with her on some of these accessibility issues so again Marie as as in before if there are things that uh, you need to break in from the chat and ask me about let me know otherwise I'm just going to try to go through these items as expeditiously as possible and maybe this time we'll actually have some more time for question and answer at the end discussion at the end but please do put um, put comments and questions into the chat and and Marie will bring anything to my attention that we need to discuss kind of more immediately so one thing that you might one way that you might bring resources into your class that's very simple and um, you know uh, low threshold kind of thing is just linking out to various kinds of web resources there are tons of resources on the web that uh, are applicable to our courses and so for the fall for example let me find the right tab here. I'm going to be teaching my uh, Search for Life in the Universe course, which is all about astrobiology. So uh, I might want to be able to direct my students to the NASA astrobiology site. This would be a very straightforward, simple kind of thing. You uh, have a couple of different options for how to do this. Uh, basically, you're, you're directing students to this, to this URL. Moodle has um, a resource that is specific for pointing students to outside web pages. It's the URL resources. It's way down at the bottom of the activities and resources chooser. I click add. It's pretty straightforward to add it. You basically just need to have a name that's going to show up on the front page of your course. and you can put in the URL. You do have a few options down here under appearance in terms of how you want that to display. Uh, the default is to have it pop up into a new window slash tab so that students can view the materials and then when they close that uh, tab or, or window depending on how it pops up on their computer they're still back in your course and they haven't lost your course okay. so if I click save and return to course uh, there it's there as a URL resource students can click on it it's going to pop open they can look at it and um, close it down and they're still in your course uh, this is kind of straightforward, but it doesn't necessarily provide a lot of context. Students can see that there's li this link to the NASA Astrobiology homepage, but what are they supposed to do with it? You can obviously take that link and embed it into assignments and other kinds of things. Um, but let me just show you an, um, another way to deal with this, which would be to use the label resource. I will frequently pop up the label resource in workshops just because it's an easy way to get to the Moodle text editor to show off some of the features of the Moodle text editor. And again, you'll have the same text editor if you are creating a, a Moodle assignment or setting up a discussion forum or uh, you know writing 
uh, creating a page, whatever. The thing to think about here is that you could actually wrap some more context around here. You know, it could say periodically throughout the course, we'll be going to the uh, NASA astrobiology site, therefore, uh, we'll be going to the NASA astrobio site. So here's the link. You can select any of the text in there, just as you would expect. This is not rocket science here, although maybe it is. Click on the link, um, paste in the URL. Again, you can have the option to open this up in a new window. Click insert and uh, click save and return to course. And we basically have now two links to the NASA Astrobiology website on the course homepage. This is a separate resource. Uh, as a separate resource, I could drag and drop it wherever I want to put that resource. This is a label resource. Again, I could put it wherever I want to. By having the label resource, uh, I can actually wrap a little bit of context around that link. But I can't really tell whether the students have clicked on this link to actually go to the NASA Astrobiology site, whereas with this dedicated URL resource, every time a student clicks on it, uh, that gets logged into the Moodle logs, and I can see who's actually going to going out and making use of this resource or not. So that's uh, that's kind of low key. I just wanted to kind of get that out of the way. Web resources are an important kind of uh, resource, and so. Um, you need to know the different kinds of ways you can bring those web sites, those external websites into your course. Probably more interesting though is embedding or incorporating web video into, um, into your courses. This is very popular uh, among faculty. I, uh, when we look at uh, going to help faculty with courses and look at them. There are oftentimes lots of examples of faculty who have found appropriate uh, web videos that they want to bring in. Um, and this is such an important uh, aspect that Moodle will actually recognize links to um, video sharing sites, a number of them anyway. And if you link to a um, no, I don't need this one anymore. If you link to a, for example, a link to a, a YouTube uh, page in your Moodle course, Moodle will automatically embed that link, uh, that video on into your Moodle page, assuming that the um, owner of the video has uh, allowed embedding. So for example, uh, if I go to YouTube and do a search for Keith Lander rock cycle, you'll uh, pull up some of the different kinds of uh, recorded lectures that I've posted to my YouTube channel in order to be able to embed them into my Moodle course. Um, this is not directly the topic for today, but I do most of these uh, lecture recordings off of my, my tablet. I actually have a couple of different flavors of iPads and I've got a whiteboard application called explain everything that I use uh, many of the many of the if you've got a tablet and you just do a search in either Google Play or in the uh, App Store uh, for whiteboard apps you'll find a ton of different whiteboard apps and most of them will allow you to import your slides into a, uh, a whiteboard presentation and have a record button where you can annotate and, and narrate your slides. So I've got this uh, rock cycle on Earth and Mars. Um, I always hate listening to myself, so I'll stop that right there. Uh, if I take this URL for the YouTube site and go into, well, let's go into my, um, ask my Life in the Universe course. Click add an activity or resource. 
any place where you can edit Moodle text, you can create that link to the YouTube web page, just like I created the link to this NASA Astrobiology web page in the Moodle text here in this, in this label resource. So a very easy way to get a YouTube video on the front page of your Moodle course is again to go into add an activity or resource, click on label, and then you can put in, you know, the label text. Watch this uh, uh, recorded lecture about the rock cycle on Earth and Mars. So you're providing a little bit of context there. You are um, pasting in an actual link to the uh, web page. Uh, because I'm working in Chrome, Chrome has automatically turned it into a link. If you're, say, working in Safari or Firefox, I'm not sure. You know, it might come over just as the actual text of the URL. You can select that text. Again, go to the link tool in the Moodle text editor. Put in the URL. Uh, even though it's going to be embedded, uh, I just am pretty compulsive and I always like to have my external links open up in a new browser window just in case. Uh, click OK. And when I hit save and return to course, instead of just having a bit of a label there that's got this link to an external website, Moodle does the work, goes out and uh, finds what's needed to actually embed the video into this label resource in my Moodle course. Okay. Students can, you know, it's right there on the page. Students can click on it. They don't have to go to an external website. They can go through and play this video. Okay. So um, that's a very easy way for you to get a video, web video, into your course, assuming that it's one of these uh, web pages that um, that Moodle will recognize. Moodle also will do um, Vimeo links if uh, you are looking at, for example, uh, a Vimeo um, video that has just the very simple vimeo.com slash and then the, the uh, ID uh, number of the video. You can do the same thing here, copy it, go over to my course, uh, add an activity or resource. Again, I'll just pop this into a label, click add. And uh, Based in that link. I'm not going to bother about trying to put any context around it this time. Click save and return to course. And now I've got two embedded videos on the front page of my Moodle course. You want to be a little bit careful because um, we've seen Moodle home pages that have like 50 embedded videos on the front page of the course. And with that many embedded videos, it can get very difficult for the browsers, depending on the student's computer, to actually load the, the course uh, page. So if you're going to do a, a lot of this, uh, as we'll talk about in a minute, you might want to shift these off the front page of your uh, Moodle homepage and put them into a page resource. Just a couple of other comments about web video. Um, there are, I don't need YouTube anymore. There are times when you can't do this directly and you need to do um, embed code instead. So I was poking around Vimeo earlier and looking at staff picks and I clicked on say, give up the ghost here is one of the staff picks. Um, it's got a more complicated URL here that might work, but if you actually go to the share and try to get the link, 
you look at that link, it's actually not in a format that Moodle will recognize. But there is an embed code. So you could do the embed code in the way that I'll, I'll show in just a minute. Uh, a better, or another example is many of us are interested in maybe incorporating TED Talks into, come on, into our Moodle courses. Uh, if you took this URL for the TED Talk and tried to just paste that into Moodle, um, you know, it would not work. But you can instead uh, go to the share option here on the TED Talks, and they will give you an embed code. If I copy that embed code, come back over to my Moodle course, I can again put this into a label resource on the front page. So I'm going to make the front page of my fall course look really pretty crappy for a while until I clean it up. I click add. Uh, you do not want to embed uh, or paste the embed code directly into the text editor here because, uh, well, it just won't work. But there is a tool on the third row of tools in the text editor that actually allows you to edit the HTML source for this label resource. This is not hardcore web programming. You don't have to worry about it. You just click on that tool. You get just a, clean, a plain box where you can paste in the uh, embed code from the TED Talks site. Click update. and. Um, the HTML editor will take that embed code you pasted in through that tool and then show how it will actually display on the web page. You could type in regular text to provide some context. You click save and return to course. And now, um, now that uh, TED Talk is also embedded in your course, even though Moodle couldn't do it uh, automatically you can wherever you can get embed codes you can use that html tool in the moodle editor to embed just one last um, thing that i want to show here in terms of web video we have a lot of video resources that are available through the library databases and we have just within the last week and a half added a uh, integration between our Moodle system and the Alexander Street uh, video um, databases that we have available through the library. So if you go to the library website, click on uh, searches, this may be a better way to get this, but this is how I do it. If I go to databases by title, I can see here under Alexander Street Press, it's going to ask me to authenticate through the proxy server. I'll uh, log in to view the films and videos that are available to us through the library databases. If I do a search for astrobiology, I come up with, well, what are the resources? Oh, you know, here's a whole episode of the universe um, that uh, deals with astrobiology. So maybe I'm, I want them to watch, I want my students to watch this episode rather than having to have them navigate to this um, in Alexander Street. I can find the video, say, yeah, that's, that's what I want. It uh, is nice, the accessible, because these videos are already professionally captioned. Uh, if you look here under the information for the video, what you want to do is click on the embed link, even though we're not actually embedding it. I mean, you could, you could do the embed code like we just talked about, but um, students would miss out on the captioning and, and all the other useful information that's on this page. If you instead use this LTI launch URL, you can just copy that URL. And instead of adding this 
as a uh, URL resource, what you'll want to do is click add an activity or resource, select external tool, add that to your course, and paste in the tool URL and give it a title. I'm going to uh, go, uh, well, I'm just going to put in the title. I would probably have copied over the title as well from the Alexander Street page. I'm just going to say astrobiology episode. Um, when the external tool recognizes that this is a location where we have set up an integration between Moodle and this external site, you'll get this little green check mark. It'll tell you that it's using the tool configuration Alexander Street video. You click save and return to course. And in this case, it's not going to be embedded in your Moodle course because the idea is I want an easy way to send my students to the Alexander Street page that has all of that extra resources, captioning and so forth. Students can directly click on this link from your Moodle, from your Moodle course. The Alexander Street page will pop up in a new window and they won't have to log in, they won't have to go through the proxy server, they won't have to have any issues with authentication, they'll get just taken straight to this page where they can play the video, watch the captions, and use you know, some of these other tools and related items that are on the page here. Okay, so um, that's a fair amount about web video, but as we've and working with faculty, there's a lot of interest. So if you can find a, uh, somebody was mentioning about uh, videos of plays or, or shows or other things. If there's a video site, either through our library databases or um, other places where you can get an embed code, um, you can you know, use that approach to bring those materials into your Moodle course. The nice thing about you know the video embedding is that students don't have to leave your, your Moodle course. It's just right there. They click play. They're used to seeing that player and clicking. Uh, the only reason for using this LTI link to the Alexander Street videos is to make use of those other ex, uh, tools like the captioning and so forth. Um, so Marie, let me just pause for a minute here. Any kinds of questions? Uh, no, nothing, nothing uh, that hasn't sort of been covered or that I'm addressing in the chat. And if anyone, you know, has additional questions, feel free to put them in here. I'm, uh, I'm monitoring fully. Okay. So I want to spend just, uh, well, actually, before we get into files, uh, let me just quickly talk about uh, a resource that is not maybe used as much by faculty as they could. Um, we've talked about putting, you know, uh, label resources, which are little chunks of text that go right on the front page of your Moodle course. But sometimes you've got more material in there than you would want to have really take up a lot of uh, real estate on your Moodle front page. In those cases, you uh, might consider putting those materials up as a page resource in Moodle. Let me just pop over to um, to my life in the universe course from a couple summers past, uh, just to give you an idea of what that can look like. Um, so, for example, here under what is life, you know, I have a lot of non-majors uh, who don't have a lot of biology background, and uh, I really need to provide some more information to them about. Um, how metabolism works, what we're talking about in terms of cellular metabolism, what we're talking about in terms of cellular reproduction, because those two aspects, being able to metabolize energy to maintain an organized state and being able to reproduce are very two very critical um, components of, of what constitutes life. And if we're looking for life elsewhere in the universe, my students, even though they're not science majors, need to have at least some understanding of that. 
So there's a lot of material there uh, rather than trying to display that all on the front page or rather than trying to put it up as a Word document or a PDF. I decided to put it up as a page in my Moodle course. Uh, this is basically gives you a place where you can do the same kind of editing. You can add text, you can add images, you can add links out to external websites. You can embed uh, YouTube videos, um, you know, all um, the kinds of things we've kind of been talking about um, and have it here as a page within the Moodle site. Now I could, I could have written this up in a Word document uh, uploaded that Word document, it'd be tough to actually embed functional YouTube videos in the Word document. I mean, maybe you could do it or maybe you could link to the Word document to those YouTube videos uh, or put that up as a PDF. By having it, um, by, by building the content in, um, in your Moodle page and by, uh, using the tools that are in the Moodle editor, especially things like um, using different levels of headers to provide organization to your page. You can make your materials much more accessible right within uh, your, your Moodle course environment. So this page, I've got some different levels of headers that are organizing the material. If someone is going through this um, page with a screen reader, they're able to navigate through it without having to worry about, um, and you know, I've got the images fully captioned, so they're showing up as nicely accessible. Not sure why this one is not. Uh, th those little gauges are the ally system. Uh, does not have a mean. Okay, so my, my, um, they didn't think that my image description was very meaningful, so I could actually replace that with an uh, image of a seesaw to illustrate the concept of linked reactions. Click save that. And then hopefully Ally will think that I've done a better job than just, I mean, I basically repeated, not sure why it's not saving. Maybe it's just taking a while. Um, so uh, that, that's an option. Instead of uploading your own content as a file, you can actually write it in Moodle using all of the, you know, headings and so forth and then uh, you know help work on your accessibility of your materials that way. I won't spend a lot of time. I mean if you are going to add a page resource, just pop over to my sandbox here. Um, you would select page from the list of resources, click add, you'd have to give it a name, and then you have under the page content area just a, a big palette with all of these tools where you can um, write or, or paste in your content, add images, do external links to bulleted lists and so forth. And the nice thing about that is that as your students are looking or are browsing through your Moodle course in the web browser, um, they can just click right into the page, stay right within Chrome or Firefox or Safari or whatever browser they're using. They don't have to download the Word document and then figure out that they need to open it up in Word. It's all just right there. Okay. Um, let me kind of quickly go through some uh, issues about uploading files and organizing them. If, um, well, let's, if I've got, um, actually let me turn editing off. And when you're in your Moodle course, if you turn editing on, 
you will briefly get a little message up here that tells you about dragging and dropping files onto your Moodle page, drag and drop files onto course sections to upload them. Uh, if I come down here to a section that's a little bit less messy, go over to uh, my desktop, and maybe get rid of some of these or move them around. So I've got a bunch of files here in my folder for life in the universe. And the easiest way to upload them is just if I grab something that's not too big and drag and drop it, you will see as you hover over your Moodle page, uh, up file upload places showing up. And so if I drop it here, it's going to upload the file. It's going to, by default, just give it the name that you had on your desktop, and, and there it's there. So that's pretty easy to just continue to drag and drop files. Um, you can actually load up a bunch of files for um, a particular week of your Moodle course. Um, so the pros here is that it's very easy. The um, kind of the disadvantage is you can quickly make your Moodle front page pretty cluttered. And again, you're not providing a lot of context around uh, these files. So another way to, to start to begin some, to provide some context is, you know, well, maybe I'm meeting Monday and Thursday um, each week. Are these files for Monday or are they for Thursday? You could very quickly just pop in a label resource. Again, the nice thing about label resources as opposed to section descriptions, as we talked about last time, is uh, Monday's readings. You can move them around, mix and match them compared to, you know, the other resources and activities that are uh, in your course. So, um, see, I've got so many embedded videos that the page is getting less responsive. I could actually move that above these readings. Uh, one of the options under the edit menu is to indent objects on your Moodle page. So maybe these two are actually Monday's readings. And if I can add another label resource, um, and I'm not going to bother correcting the typo there because this is just a workshop. Um, I can move that label above this last reading. Come on. And again, indent that one. And it just provides a little bit of a visual cue as to, oh yeah, I've got these three. As a student, I, I can see I've got these three files in this week, but these two I need to deal with on Monday, and this one I can wait till Thursday to deal with. So that's a little bit better. It helps you organize. But um, uh, let's see. Uh, just quickly, you can see that this PDF that I uploaded uh, is not showing up very well um, with the accessibility score. You can click on that gauge to say, okay, there's this PDF, which is basically just a capture of a web page that I did, did not come with any headers or other tags to make it easy for students to navigate around if they're using a screen reader. You can click in here and look at all of the issues. Um, so basically, from Ally's perspective, if I took that PDF into um, Adobe Acrobat Pro and um, arranged a couple of or, or, or identified where the what the structure of the of the page was, 
then I could upload a new version of that and get a much better ally score. Now, do I need to remediate this? This is such a short document that the fact that it's untagged is showing up as a bad ally score, but uh, adding headers really may not make a lot of sense on a PDF document that is really very short, except this one is longer than I thought. So yeah, I could, I could tag this up with uh, different levels of headers and improve the score here. Okay. Uh, one, um, I want to, I mean, there are other ways of, of adding files to your uh, course. You can, uh, these files that you've uploaded are actually file resources. You, if you go here and click edit settings, you would see the kind of standard Moodle settings uh, page that you would expect. You could actually attach a description to the file you've uploaded. Uh, this will show you the uploaded file. You've got, you know, some other, you could restrict access to turn on uh, completion tracking and so forth, uh, just as any kind of other resource. Another way to add this, if you're, if the drag and drop is uh, awkward for some reason, you're having trouble arranging your windows so you can actually see the file to drag and drop, you can click add a resource, select a file resource from the resources menu, give it a name, and then instead of dragging and dropping the file onto the file upload area, there's actually a button here for adding the file. And this will let you browse to your computer and locate where those files are and, um, and upload them that way. So I won't bother finishing that, but most faculty probably just will turn editing on in their course and click drag and drop um, to drop the file resources onto the different Moodle sections. Now I have worked with faculty where all of the readings are you know, up here at the top of the course. And again, the idea is how can we provide context? Well, if that reading is not gonna be dealt with until the week of October 19th, um, Add it in that section rather than adding it at the at the top of the course. Um, one way uh, you can see that perhaps if I've got twelve documents I want the students to read in the week of September twenty eighth, this can get pretty messy if I just drag and drop them all as individual files onto the uh, Moodle front page. What you can use instead is a um, folder resource. And the folder resource has a number of options or another number of uh, benefits. So readings for, I don't know, week, whatever that was, week five. You have a, an area where you can drag and drop multiple files. You can create subfolders within this folder. If I um, just come over here and um, drop a whole bunch of readings onto, that's gonna be too big, to this file upload area. They're all going to be here within this folder. Um, you can determine how that folder will display. You can do it inline on a course page, in which case you'll get a little drop down menu on the course page. I actually like it on a separate page um, because I'll show you why in a minute. An underused part of the folder resource is the description. And here, um, you know, we've got 
five files to look at. What I want you to look at this one first and think about this and then um, compare what so-and-so says in the second article to the first. All of this description, you can provide context around these five readings that you're putting up into the course. And so if I click save and return to course, um, this shows up as a folder resource for readings for week five. Students will click on it. They will see the documents that you've uploaded, but all of the directions you want them to think about um, as they work through these documents, you can add into the description for that folder. And I've really kind of taken this to heart on my courses. So if I look, uh, if we look at my geology course from last fall, I've got a folder here that says readings and resources for this development of the concept of deep time topic. And if, um, if a student clicks on that, they will see, you know, all of the files. Um, but because the, the, um, the description field for the folder is just a um, modal text. You can do all the things we've already talked about. You can provide a link to a YouTube video page and Moodle will embed it. You can add the narrative description. Here, I want you to read, watch this, and then I want you to think about this. Here are some other external resources that I've linked. And here are the supplemental readings. Here, here I've got a description of where they're from. I could also say, you know, I want you to look at this, what is deep time article, and talk about, you know, XYZ, or think about XYZ as you're reading it. So, um, you know, if you are going to be planning to upload a lot of uh, files to various sections of your Moodle course, you might want to think about organizing them into folder resources and then um, uh, using this uh, description of the resource as a way to provide more context about around those readings. Okay, so um, incorporating web video, linking out to websites, creating web pages, uploading files, organizing them kind of the last area of, of content um, that I wanted to address today is many of us want to be able to put uh, either lectures or hopefully more likely mini lectures into our Moodle courses, especially if we're teaching remotely and are not going to be able to present those lectures in person in the fall. So um, there's I've already kind of actually demonstrated one of those ways. I spent a lot of time using my tablet and whiteboard application to record and um, and annotate my my slide presentations, upload them to my YouTube channel, and just embed them like any other YouTube video. But we also have incorporated into Moodle a tool called VoiceThread, which allows you to do narrated, annotated um, um, presentations. It does, allows you to do other things as well, but uh, most faculty are primarily interested in VoiceThread in terms of a way to provide those kinds of uh, presentations. So uh, let me... Let me kill the geology course and um, if I come in here to my fall course shell, um, it's pretty easy to add voice thread activities to your course. There are actually four different kinds of voice thread activities. We're really only going to talk about two of them today uh, and only really at a, at a uh, fairly um, overview level. I will send out the link to our uh, recording of our uh, VoiceThread um, lecture as we do follow up for the workshop today. But uh, VoiceThread is an external tool, but it's one that is uh, used so much that we've got it set up as a separate option here in the activity chooser. You would just select VoiceThread. And uh, when you add this tool to your course, 
it initially starts off as just kind of a generic connection between our Moodle system and uh, our site license at the voicethread.com site where we have, you know, contracted for the ability to, you know, host uh, voice threads for our faculty and students. Uh, I'm going to call this one voice thread home for a reason that will show up in a minute. When you're first adding a voice thread activity, all you need to do is basically give a name reflecting what you're wanting to do with that. And you have to decide whether or not you are going to have this be a graded activity. For the two things we're going to be looking at today, um, I'm, they're not going to be graded activities. I'm actually going to leave this checked for now just so I can show you the different options. If you uncheck this, then the grade settings will go away. And this will just be a connection between your Moodle course and resources that you have at VoiceThread. Click Save and Return to Course. And um, we've got this basic external tool set up. But at this point, it's kind of an unformed, generic connection to VoiceThread. The first time you launch it as the instructor on the course, VoiceThread will say, oh, well, you only haven't specified what kind of a VoiceThread activity this is yet. Do you want just a link to um, your account at VoiceThread? Do you want to build an actual assignment where students are submitting uh, VoiceThreads? This is the only one that requires grades to be sent back from VoiceThread to Moodle. Um, so, We'll look at VoiceThread Home today, which is basically just a way to set up a connection to your VoiceThread account. And um, individual VoiceThread is what you would select if you want to take one of the VoiceThreads you've created and plop it into a particular location on your Moodle course. I'm going to say VoiceThread Home first here get success. I can close this window down. Now, whenever I or any of our, my students in the course click on this link, we will be taken to our individual VoiceThread accounts at uh, VoiceThread. And you can see that I have a whole bunch of VoiceThread presentations, some of which have been shared with me, some of which I have created myself. Uh, if I go over here, I can pull up the VoiceThreads that are just the ones that are owned by me. You will see a create voice thread, and I will go through this in about three minutes. Uh, you can click uh, add media. You can upload your um, uh, your PowerPoint or or PDF slides from your computer. I'm going to do the PDF because that will op upload more quickly. Uh, example uh, voice thread. Uh, I think this was Mars overview. Voice thread will take will upload that file, and because this is a PDF of a, well, I use Google Slides, but essentially same thing would happen with the PowerPoint presentation. It's going to unbundle them, and. Uh, set them up as separate slides uh, in your VoiceThread account. While that's working, uh, since we're running low on time, I'm just going to show you. And, and, and from there, once the slides were all there, you would click on comment. You would have the ability to add a voice over onto your slides. You could use uh, little drawing tools to draw on the slides as you're talking. There is, well, here are the, the slides. So I can click comment. I can um, add a comment to this. Um, oops, slow down. I can, uh, you know, go to the first slide here and I could click on the add a comment. I could click the microphone. It'll give me a little countdown. I can say, I can select a pen or pencil. I can start talking about the difference between Mars 
and Earth. Click stop recording. And um, I can save that comment. And it it's a comment on that, that slide. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward to take your slide presentations, upload them into Power into VoiceThread, add comments. In terms of sharing this Mars overview, uh, what I would do is, well, maybe I want the students to view this VoiceThread uh, during the week of September 21st. I would click Add an Activity or Resource, um, select VoiceThread. In this case, call it the um, Mars Overview Voice Thread Presentation. In this case, uh, I don't want to accept any grades back from the from this activity. Click Save and return to course. And um, uh, what we is uh, first time that I click on that activity as the instructor. I will tell VoiceThread um, that what I want to do is pair that activity to an individual VoiceThread that I've already created. And I will select it. It will say, um, here's the, the VoiceThread that you've selected here. Do you want to share it with the class? You click share with the class. And now that VoiceThread activity has been tagged to be a direct link to that presentation. Any student who clicks on here, well, that presentation will automatically pop open and the students can play, play through, hear my comments, see the annotations I'm drawing on the slides and so forth. So that's about a, an eight minute overview of VoiceThread that really doesn't give it justice, but in terms of of adding our uh, recorded lectures to the to the to our courses, uh, VoiceThread is uh, you know a built-in option. Has the advantage that uh, students can access these directly from your Moodle course uh, in their web browser. They don't have to download some narrated PowerPoint presentation and figure out how to play it or anything like that. VoiceThread also gives opportunities for students to comment back if you want, and you can actually have you know, some conversations around your uh, slide presentations or have students create their own slide presentations. VoiceThread is a very good way for students to do uh, course um, presentations because they can do the same kind of, of thing. So we're just about running out of time. Um, uh, just to finish up, just, um, just to make sure that we've got a record of everyone who was on the session, please just go into the chat and um, take a, uh, a, a you know a minute to talk about uh, some of the tools from today that you might want to use in your course. Again, um, this we've got these workshops tied to the Moodle Foundations uh, course, so if you go into that Moodle Foundations course, um, these page resources will have description and screencasts talking about working with files and folders, using labels and pages, adding external resources, much of what we talked about today. And then uh, as you are working on your courses for the fall, working on adding different kinds of content. Uh, come back into this uh, activity here and you know report or just briefly describe how you're adding content to your fall course. This will give Marie and I you know um, something that we can provide feedback on looking at your course and also we will use this. I'll, I'll use the um, submissions to this activity as a way to trigger a Moodle badge that will give you some documentation for for being here and working through in your fall courses the topics that we've talked about today. So with that, I will um, stop the sharing. Um, let me just ask if there are um, you know other 
questions that are on people's mind at this point we can i've got a four o'clock meeting that i'm late to but they can start without me um you know if there are some additional topics or questions that people want to ask right now we can um, get them otherwise you know you can always contact marie and i by emailing tltc at purchase.edu and She'll probably get back to you more quickly than I will because of how crazy my schedule is these days, but it will come to, to both of us. Uh, Marie, let me just ask you um, for the second half of the session, were there any kinds of questions that be beyond what you dealt with in the chat that I should comment on? Um, I, the question from JD is about um, not so much sharing work with students, but being able to have students share sort of with oh, each other. Okay. So I don't know if you want to like so, keep going for a minute. Uh, yeah, JD, we can, I can get back to you more specifically, but uh, that folder resource where I went through it very quickly to show how you could use it to, as instructor to upload files, you could add a folder. Well, there's some other people who are interested as well. So let me just quickly go back into the share here. And um, uh, if I add a folder and call this examples of student work, um, you can add a description or not, depending on what you want to do. Um, you actually don't think you have to upload any initial files. You can just create the folder resource. If you create that, then uh, when, I need to find it. Okay, so if, if I am looking at the folder, there's obviously no files that have been uploaded yet. As instructor, I could click edit and upload files here. But when I'm looking at the folder, if I go over to the administration block, now I'm looking at folder administration options in addition to my course administration options. And I can click on permissions here. And this will show all of the permissions that are attached to this. And one of the permissions is manage files in the folder module. And by default, you as the teacher, and if you have added anyone as course librarian, would have the ability to add and edit the files. Um, if I click the little plus sign that's associated with this permission, and just click on students, now students have the ability to click on that edit button to add uh, files. But you have to realize this is, you know, they have full rights to manage files uh, in that folder. So you have to impress upon them that they need to play nicely with each other and don't delete each other's files. But that would be a very simple way for you to create a, a folder resource in, which would be a place where students could share, um, could submit folder, could submit files and have them all in one place where everyone could view them. If you want a little bit more control, you can also think about using a, a discussion forum activity where you set up a discussion forum and you have, you tell all of your students, you know, reply to this discussion forum post and in your reply, attach the folder, the, the file that you want to share for other students to look at. And then students can see each other's posts and the attached files. And that would be another way that uh, students could see each other's files. And in that case, one student would not be able to edit another student's post, so you wouldn't have to worry about them, you know, stepping on each other or doing something you know, nefarious. So that's at least a couple of different ways that students could um, have the ability to, um, you know, upload their files to either the folder resource or 
um, a discussion forum, or yeah, Janice, they could, if they've got a, vi uh, um, a, a video up on um, Vimeo or YouTube, you could set up a discussion forum where you say, please link to your YouTube uh, video page in your discussion forum post, and Moodle would automatically embed it just the way that they embed, um, um, just, just the way we talked about uh, Moodle automatically embedding uh, uh, videos from links to YouTube pages. Okay. So I've, I've kept, uh, uh, you uh, over time and most of you are still here so thanks for showing up uh, today again there are uh, three more uh, workshops to round out the week um, and then I'm going to take a little bit of a break although not so much uh, and um, again any questions uh, just email tltc at purchase.edu as Marie has put into the chat and uh, we'll get back to you Thanks, everyone. And I will stop the recording.